ladies and gentlemen, that is 101 megabits. That is crazy fast for a Wi-Fi hotspot. Welcome, my friend. Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode today. I am super excited that I finally am making a drastic improvement, drastic changes in my internet uh, hotspot connection status. Not sure if all those words mean anything together, but basically upgrading most of my system because I've been experiencing severe problems with the internet connections, specifically while boondocking, camping off-grid, out in Bureau of Land Management, BLM land, or in National Forest. Last summer in 2018, it was just a terrible experience. I would drive from location to location trying to get uh, internet reception and just really, really struggling. The problems I had last year were due to a number of factors. So I have had a setup for about the last year with one, two, three different providers and all of those did not work out really well. Let me explain. I have this small CD holder that's holding all of my hotspots that I've used this last year. So I'm gonna go through those and explain what they are. First, this is a Sprint hotspot. This is the first thing I started out with. And I got this from an organization out of Denver called PCs for People. It's a pretty fantastic thing if you have low income. I think you have to earn under $25,000 a year to qualify to get it. And it's $10 a month, unlimited, unthrottled, from Sprint Cellular Network, which is pretty fabulous uh, if you're on a budget and if you're in cities. So that worked pretty good for all the time that I was in cities. The problem I had was when I went out boondocking and went outside of the Sprint coverage area. And on January 27th, this uh, unit shut down as my year came to an end. And within one or two days of that, the unit developed a problem. Let me show you. If you flip upside down here, when I came back from Florida, this is how the unit looked. It looked all split apart like this. And if you look inside, this lithium battery here has become really bloated. And it's all soft and it was all like raised up. So I'm sort of lucky that while I was in Florida that this thing did not catch fire because it bloated up and separated and it was left in the on position. So my tip would be turn off your hot spots and lithium batteries while you go on vacation, particularly for the less expensive units like hot spots and cell phones. Maybe not if you have like a Tesla or a uh, Battleborn battery or something like that. That's probably fine. But these smaller ones seem to be more sensitive to stuff like that. So moving on, unit number two. Um, last summer, I purchased this off of eBay. It's a Jetpack Verizon. I thought, hey, I'm gonna get Verizon coverage, get this Jetpack, and the rage, everybody was super hot on this deal to get $5 a month for 4G coverage, unlimited, unthrottled, and it was through a little hack, um, and I didn't know too much about it when I got involved in it but I paid a gentleman to rewrite the software inside of this unit and it worked for about three weeks and then it went dead. Um, the unit still is functional, but the service from Verizon went dead as Verizon cracked down and got rid of everybody that was trying to use this $5 exploit. Um, and I was one of those people. So this worked for about three weeks and then it was shut down. The next unit I tried, I've never done a video on, and this is a Walmart Street Talk. So I bought this unit from Walmart, and as my jetpack shut down over here, I bought this, and I ran this for about two days before it ran out of the prepaid four gigabytes of storage that I had, and it just burned through that. So there's no unlimited plan from Straight Talk, at least not at the time that I purchased this, and so I only used this for three or four days and then I was out of data. And ironically, I thought that I had 30 days to return this, but it was apparently 14 days and I waited too long to return it. So I'm sort of stuck with this unit. So now I have one, two, three, and today I have unit number four. 
Unit number four is up here on my cradle. This is a Verizon 8800L, the 8800L. This is brand new from Verizon. This is their new super fast hotspot. They call this hotspot the gigabit hotspot. That's how fast it's supposed to be. And apparently it is a category 18 hotspot moving up from a category one like I've had in the past, which uses apparently two channels and two antennas to um, the newer category. I think it's a category three or four or something like that that uses four antennas and four channels. And then this new one here, I think uses something like eight or something like that. It's way more channels. I think it still has a limited number of antennas. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's supposed to be crazy fast because think of it like lanes of a highway going from a two lane road up to an eight lane road. Um, it's supposed to be that much faster. So I've been running some speed tests and I wanna show you what the speed tests are in Phoenix, just using the standard setup that I have. By the way, I have a WeBoost Cradle and uh, I'm using that to boost the signal up to this little stubby omnidirectional antenna, which is great for cities or areas where you're close to a cell tower if you're out boondocking in Bureau Land Management land. I did run a speed test when I was in Phoenix inside the city just to compare to the boondocking speed test because I wanted to see how much faster it would be in a city versus being out away from the city and sort of in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I'm going to insert that video here so you can see how fast it is. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona today and I'm doing a speed test with my new Verizon 8800L jetpack. So uh, basically, you can see here, this is Verizon connecting to a server here in Phoenix, Arizona. Going to go ahead and see how the speed is. Click go. The ping, anything below 100 is pretty good. Below 20 is excellent. So let's see what the ping is here. 49, that's pretty good. Okay, we can see it's up to 80, 97, 95 over 100 ladies and gentlemen that is 101 megabits that is crazy fast for a wi-fi hotspot that is really good and here for upload speed getting nine megabits that's also really fabulous I do have one additional upgrade, which I think is going to be a game changer this coming summer. Probably not such a big issue now where I am today, but this is pretty darn awesome and I'm excited about it. Last year when I was out uh, at a several events, I was not able to get any connection and I would go around and I would talk to other people at the camp and they were getting connections. Uh, part of that's probably due to having Sprint. And now that I have Verizon, I have a little bit of an extra edge in that I spent an extra $50, $60 to get a directional Yagi antenna. Let me show you that. I bought this from eBay and I put it on a painter's pole, which was a donation from one of my subscribers. And so I'm going to be mounting this outside of the step van when I'm boondocking for 14 days on BLM land or in National Forest. So basically I can take this and direct it, actually pointing it at a cell phone tower and then run the cable inside of the back door and I'll be able to hopefully be able to pick up the signal directly from the tower. So I'm excited to have this. I'm going to play around with that uh, today and get it hooked up and see if it makes any difference even though I have a great signal out here. The first thing we want to do is find out where the cellular towers are in my area. So you can use this website here. This is cellmapper.net. There's a few different websites that are similar. You select Verizon as the carrier over here and then locate where you're at. I'm right here um, slightly at this area where this little bump is in the road right out here. So sort of between these two towers, between this tower over here and this tower here. And I can see this tower clearly outside when I walk outside my rig. This one is sort of at the edge of a hill. So I'm uh, not sure how that affects things. I have a pretty good signal right now. So I want to do a few tests. Uh, first with the little stubby omnidirectional antenna without the booster. Then I want to do it with the booster. 
then I want to use the directional antenna and point it at this tower over here and see if uh, it's any different and it should be faster. The first thing we want to do is go into the diagnostic from Verizon for the jetpack. So you need to log into that with a special URL that Verizon gives you. And then once you're logged in, you go down to the bottom of the screen here to this about screen to this little arrow. Click there and you go up to diagnostics. And what you want to look for is this signal strength down here and it's measured in dBm. Right now with my stubby antenna out here boondocking, I'm getting a negative 93. That's not too bad. It's not fantastic, but it's not too bad. That's with my booster. So now I'm going to turn off the booster and see what this rating is. Okay, I've now turned off the booster, so this signal here should change from negative 93 to maybe something in the hundreds. Let's hit refresh and see what it does here. Okay, so negative 111, that's expected, negative 111. So the booster is doing a lot to help out this signal. I'm going to go ahead and turn the booster back on. Back here is the step fan. I am outside of Phoenix, I don't know, about 30-40 minutes at uh, BLM land. This is called Saddle Mountain and there's these gorgeous mountains back here. Really beautiful area. Um, just amazing that it's all green here right now. I guess there's just been rain the past few days and so that's probably why everything's greening up. It is a bit cold. Last night it was uh, pretty much freezing here, 32 degrees Fahrenheit but I do have my directional antenna set up. Let me show you that. Up here is the directional antenna and I have it pointing off in the distance and it's just on a painter's pole that's extended up and I made these little brackets here to attach it to the back of my rig so I can remove the pole when I want to drive and easily install it and then run the cable in. Right now I just have it going in the door. I've got to drill a hole and put a little seal thing for it so I can uh, put it in and out but I'll do that later right now I just want to do some testing off in the distance right about where that mountain is is a cell phone tower I can see it in the distance not sure if you can see it here in the video let me zoom in a bit maybe you'll be able to make it out it's just right about there Setting up my laptop in the back of the van right here at the door so I can go out to the directional antenna and rotate it around and check and see what the status is at every position as I rotate it slowly around pointing different directions. Okay, this is still the negative 93 dB that I was getting with the stubby antenna with the booster. I'm using the booster now. I have the directional antenna pointed directly at one of the towers. So this should change. It should actually get like, I don't know, negative 80 or something like that. It should be a much better signal with the directional antenna right at the tower. Let's see what it does. And it says negative 104. That's actually worse. That's almost the same as not using the booster. So maybe I'm not pointing exactly at the tower. Um, or maybe that's not a Verizon tower, even though that website shows it as a Verizon tower. So I'm going to move around in a circle trying to find a better signal and then refreshing this occasionally. Okay, I'm just going to move it just a little bit. You can see it going over there just a few degrees. Let's try it again. Back over here to the laptop and let's refresh this. Might have to wait a few seconds. Okay, it's already showing 108 that that's a worse signal. Back over to the antenna once again. Let's move it back this way just a little bit. All right, there, and back to the laptop over here. And let's see if we get a better signal. Might have to wait a few seconds. All right, refreshing now. Trying to get the camera to focus on the laptop. It's uh, not wanting to cooperate here. So now we're getting a negative 103. That's not great. Um, I'm going to keep going around a circle, see if I can get this thing over a negative 90. Back to the antenna, rotate it yet a little more. Let's see if that does it. Back to the laptop. Let's hit refresh here. And still negative 103. Uh, signal to noise ratio 10. Not sure if that's good or not. I don't know what's going on with that. I've been told that looking at the bars up on the hotspot up over there is not the way to determine 
if you're getting a good cell signal like um, an antenna strength that has to do with a combination of a number of factors so I don't know this uh, is not encouraging back to the antenna again rotating it a little bit more let's try that right there see if that's any better back over to the laptop and refresh again negative 104 that's not good okay we're getting really close to that second tower that should be almost right on the second tower which is off there in the distance to the left of that cactus by that little mountain should be right there and I think the antenna is pointed right at it hopefully that gives a better signal back over here negative 105 this is not encouraging it's like the directional antenna is not really working I'm going to continue rotating around uh, not going to do any video for the rest of the circle going around unless I find a really strong uh, cellular signal to get that uh, decibel thing down below uh, 90 uh, in the 80s preferably to get a better signal than the stubby otherwise that little stubby short antenna which is the cheap one which is not supposed to be as good for boondocking is far outperforming my directional antenna so I'm going to put the camera down and go the rest of the way around 360 degrees and see if I can find a good signal I've gone a full 360 all the way around with the antenna and the best I could ever get was negative 102 so it was typically 102 to about 110 something like that um, all the way around really never broke better than negative 102 so my experience today is this directional antenna really is not doing a very good job I'm not impressed at all the uh, little stubby antenna was much much better um, the last thing I want to do is a speed test. I have appointed again directly at the tower So I want to compare the speed test now to a speed test with the stubby antennas And I'm getting a ping of 37 Apologize for the focus not sure why it's doing that All right, so we are getting about 17 megabits coming down that's not great it's not terrible uh, nowhere near the wonderful speeds I was getting in Phoenix and going up here we are getting about 9 or 10 about 10 megabits going up so um, not bad for boondocking but uh, certainly not crazy fast speeds either and that again is with the directional antenna with the poor signal that I'm getting uh, but let's try it with the stubby antenna with the better signal and see if that's better. Just one little bit of interesting trivia. Looking here with the stubby antenna hooked up, I'm getting full bars, uh, four, four out of five bars. That's uh, pretty good. With the Yagi directional antenna, just before I switched this, I was only getting one bar. I didn't get a video of that. So it seems like that the directional antenna is just not pulling down the signals. By the way, this is the cable I have for the directional antenna. This is an ultra low loss. It's 25 feet, which is what's recommended for the, the directional antenna. So this is really high quality cable and I have the proper connectors on each end. I don't even need the adapters, which other people are using in some of their videos. So this is a really good high-end cable. Uh, I just don't understand why I'm getting such a poor signal. It's almost like the directional antenna is not even working. So my last test of the day, this is the stubby antenna hooked back up in comparison to the directional antenna. Directional antenna, we were getting 17 and 10. Let's see how we do with the stubby antenna. Again, this is boondocking out in the middle of nowhere. So we were getting 17 and 10. Now we're getting 19, 18, 19, 
around there 17 it's almost like uh, there's no difference between the directional antenna it's a little bit faster 18 so one megabit faster that's not a huge difference and uh, we were getting about 10 going up and now we're getting about 14 15 so uh, a little bit better with the stubby antenna but not like a huge huge difference so there you have it. I'm very excited about being with Verizon now and having the new hotspot. Certainly in the city, it's blazing crazy fast. And even out here boondocking uh, with the stubby antenna, the speeds are exceptionally good. Great for uploading, downloading videos, watching um, YouTube videos, all of that stuff. And uh, if I can just figure out the directional antenna and why it doesn't seem to be helping when I'm boondocking, that would be great. If you have any suggestions, ideas, please list the comments below. Maybe there's something I'm missing and I just have no idea why this uh, appears not to be working. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Savor the moment and I'll see you next video.